everyone, good morning and welcome back to the channel. Hope you are all well. So um, I'm going to continue with Colour Along in Enchanted Earth as part two. Um, last time we did this top bit of the acorn and I did a first layer dry with raw umber. Albert drew a pencil and walnut brown and then I showed you how I activated like the first couple of whatever they're called. Uh, up here with water and now I have activated all of the rest of this and now I'm actually going to go be going back in dry with the pencils to just deepen the colour up putting in some black for some shadows um, so I will show you a couple of that on a couple of the the bits and then I will do the rest off camera otherwise this video and colour along is going to be so so long so I'm just going to get my pencil sharpener out and sharpen these probably should have done this before i started but hey ho so i use the the dial 133 uh to sharpen my pencils and i have done for quite a while and i get the black sharpener out right so i'm just gonna zoom you in and i'm just gonna show you so what I'm going to do is just go in and darken up. So we're using raw umber. And I'm just going to go in dry with the pencil and darken up the, the raw umber colour. Because it's got quite pale with the water activation. What's so good about these pencils and what Shell from Shell's colouring journey really loves is that these pencils are so good. Both dry and wet. Um... And they really are. They are amazing. I absolutely love them. I would one day like to have the whole set, but steady on there, steady on. So there you can see I'm just darkening up those. I just do these top. I'm going to call them petals, even though they're not petals. <laughs> don't know what you would call them on an acorn, really. So there, I've just gone in and darkened up that raw umber colour. And then I'm going to go back in now with the walnut brown at the tops, like I did when I did my first layer. And that's just to deepen and intensify the colour. Now that you've kind of got a layer of pencil and it's been activated, it does make it slightly easy, slightly easier to colour. I might not even need the black because the walnut brown is really making that lovely and deep at the top. So there'll be quite a lot of shadow here where it overlaps and at the top. So I need to just deepen that bit up there because that'll be quite a lot of overlap there as well. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to need the black. I just got it out as a precaution really. But that walnut brown is now coming up lovely and dark. So that's essentially what I'm going to do now for the rest of the top of this acorn is go in and intensify all of the colour and I will come back on camera when I have done that. Okay, bye. Hello, back again. As you can see, I have now completed going back over the, the wet, the activated pencil and I've gone back over it dry now and put in, intensify the colour to put the shadows in and you can see it's much more vibrant so i thought i'd make a start and try and pick out some of the leaves in this section below so i'm going to zoom you in and i'm going to tell you what colors we are going to be using leaf green <clears throat> and probably an emerald green and maybe even a deep cobalt green but for now we're just going to use leaf green and we're going to pick out all of the leaves in here, which can be quite a tricky thing in Malpomini Chatsy Pan and Chu's books because the pages are very, very detailed. So I'm going to pick out all of these smaller leaves and do them this colour. These kind of larger ones here, I'm likely to do just a slightly different colour combo just to kind of make make it obvious that they're different if that makes sense but all of these like smaller ones here I'll be doing in leaf green is what I'm using first of all 
And this one, I can't tell. I think all of this bit around here is leaves, but the, with the black bits in is the, is the flower. Sometimes you've got to make these dishes and ugh, decisions about what the colourless intention, um, artist intention was. So you could, you could technically think these are petals, and that would be fine. But I'm going to go with them as leaves. And I haven't decided yet whether I'm actually going to activate this because it's such a small space. Probably doesn't need activation, but this was a much larger space. Um, and so I felt it needed the water. So I might not activate these. The colour's already, you know, quite vibrant without me needing to add the water as well. And some of these flowers, I might need to activate the pencil with water. Okay. I certainly do this the same colour. It's quite a beautiful, whimsical page, this one. I haven't quite decided what I'm doing with these clouds at the bottom. I'm likely just to shade in the dark parts and then use some stickles on them, I think. Um, I haven't decided what I'm doing for this here, whether I'll do a background at all, it's probably li fairly likely that I will. Uh, probably with hmm, probably TBCs, silky crayons. But could chalk pastels would equally work well. There's lots of kind of little tangles, these little lines here. I like always like vines, I think. I wonder if that's part of a flower. So I think that's I think that's a bit of a leaf there. And then over this side, it's just a question of kind of looking at the picture really closely and going, yeah, I think that's leaf. And if it isn't, well, it doesn't matter necessarily. I don't think. No one's going to be looking at the picture closely enough to go to, oh, that wasn't a leaf. Why has she done that like that? Not going to happen. And it's all kind of colourish choice, really, at the end of the day. Don't have to do leaf green. Um, I find that a really tricky thing. To, to never, um, to go outside the box and colour things. Uh, a different colour to what they are in real life. I find that really tricky. It's exciting when you do it. Um, but I find I've often got to make that decision very quickly and early on. Because otherwise I will just fall to my natural... Well, leaves are green. Well, they're not always. We know that. Uh, you know, Especially in autumn when you get all the oranges and yellows. And the reds. Uh, so, yeah, I have to make a very conscious decision when I look at a picture um, whether I'm going to do those leaves green. And I kind of have to think about it at the offset. Um, I think, I think that might be all of the green. Um, then we're just going to go over the bottom of those leaves with the emerald green, just to darken up the bottoms. Yeah, I have to make a very conscious decision. It's normally because I'm going for a particular colour scheme, like, you know, like, or a very limited colour palette that I go, okay, I'm not doing green leaves. Um, it's not dark enough for me, so I'm going to get this beautiful deep cobalt green out. Let's go back to one of my new colours that I just got from in the Albert drawer. And just going over the bottom of those, putting just a little bit of shading in really where they kind of pop out from the flower. Not all the way up, just kind of at the bottom really. Yeah, 
I don't think I'm going to activate the leaves with water this time. It's just such a small space and it doesn't seem, you know, it's just the colours there. You don't need to activate it really. You know, and it's blending nicely together, so I don't feel the need to do that. Just to give it a nice contrast as well. There you go, that's that side. And we'll move over to this side. You could go over the tips of the leaves with a, a much lighter green if you wanted as well. I'm not, I'm just going to leave the tips of mine white where I've left it white. Um, that's what I've decided to do. It's my normal go to when I colour leaves as well. It's like colour the bottom a bit dark and the tip a bit white. But I am kind, I'm kind of trying to play with the way that I colour leaves. Um, when I'm doing, especially when I'm doing bigger ones, you know, it could be that I do the edges dark or um, whatever. Okay, so that's the green in the leaves. Um, now I think I'm gonna just, I don't know, I might just do this tree so what I'm going to do the tree I think I'm going to do that leaf green as well um, I think I'm going to make the top of it lighter the leaf green and make it gradually darker and what I imagine I will do is I'll get some Stedler fine liner and to give it a bit more texture put some dots in here as well. That's what I imagine I'm going to do. That actually goes underneath that bit of acorn there. Oh, I might well activate this as well, to be honest, because it's a bigger air, bigger area. Um, but so I'd probably put a layer of, if I'm going to activate it, I'd probably put a layer of this leaf green over all of it, and then the darker at the bottom. I'm just going to do that. And then the fun begins, because once you've got the leaves kind of sorted, you can get them with the, the, the nice, I call them the nice colours. The pink, reds, blues and purples and all the different colours that <laughs> are not greens or browns. Um, isn't that funny, the way that kind of sits in my head. We can get on with the fun parts, the nice, bright, vivid colours now. Uh, right, and so I'm just going to go around these bottom bits, putting in a little bit of shading in the tree. Um, just to give it a bit of variety, kind of work out where the shading might be, that kind of thing. Could be here rather than over in that little bit of corner. And this bottom bit here. I know I still got a few leaves to do. Um, and the flowers, like the bigger leaves, and we can do that. That's not a problem. Probably just quickly going to activate that. So as I did with the acorn, it's the light colour going down into the dark. Otherwise the dark colour just completely gets wiped out with the, uh, 
the light colour gets completely wiped out by the dark colour if you do it the other way around. Um, I find that that works for me. You know, I'll probably go back in and do what I've done with the acorn and go in back, go back in with the pencils dry just to intensify the colour, deepen up the shadow, that kind of thing. There you go, so I've gone over all the light now and I'll just go and activate that beautiful emerald, uh, deep cobalt green. Love it. So gorgeous, such a gorgeous colour. There you go. So that's that. Right. Then I'm going to get out the olive green, which I think, uh, earth green yellowish. And we're going to do these bigger leaves now. So, got earth green yellowish, and I'm just going to put a whole layer of this over this big leaf. Again, probably leaving the tip lighter. I just switched the bush around and I didn't even think about whether you were still on camera. <laughs> the That's like that. And then this one here is very different. This is the same over here. So we'll do the same with this one. Well, on days like that, I think I'm going to do completely a different colour. Right, so then we're going with the emerald green, I think, again. And what we're going to do is just take the lines of this leaf and just go up the lines with the emerald green. So it's kind of like the olive green is the, the base of the leaf. And then the emerald green kind of goes up the middle, picking out the lines that the artist has drawn on it. Like so. And I am going to activate this with water. There we go, kind of like that. And then I think for this one, I've got the deep cobalt green again. And I'm gonna just go where these lines are. And they're gonna be a much darker leaf than the rest. And take the green out as far as possible. Uh, I may I maybe have put a little bit of diff oh just bum just smudge that water. Need to be a bit more careful. Right and then same here. Take the cobalt green up with these lines that are marked on the leaf. And take the cobalt green out as far as possible to the like tips of these leaves. And then I will be adding another colour into that. Which will be this dark phthalo green. And it just gives you a little bit of contrast on the greens so they're not all the same colour. So I'll just add that then on the tips and kind of join them together. Maybe still want to leave a bit of white if you want to. It doesn't have to necessarily join up and blend together. You know, you could use that as a natural highlight or whatever. Right, so that's that. I'm so bad. I left this paintbrush in the water. And like the coating on the paintbrush is completely peeled off. So note to everybody, don't do that. <laughs> uh, right, so with this one. I'm going to activate the olive first and then add in this, the green in the middle. Otherwise the olive green will not, it will just get smushed in to the other one. It's very tricky because tricky it's quite a, a little narrow space. Um, but that's worked. And same here, so I'll activate the olive green first. Oh, it's earth green yellowish, isn't it? Or not olive green, but it's very olive green to me. And then you just might want to move a bit of that onto the tip. So that's that one. And then the other one, I would actually activate this deep phthalo green first. 
you don't need much water at all you don't need your brush dripping with water and then I would go down into this deep and I'm actually well, not, well that's a bit too much you see um, I'm actually uh, blotting my brush after I've taken it on out of the water onto a piece of kitchen roll I've seen people use like flannels and things like that again that's it's perfectly or even those um, microfiber cloths you can use um, I just like using kitchen towels easier for me there we go and I will definitely be going back in with those and deepening them up and putting a color back where I want it if that makes sense so that's definitely all of the leaves now I believe and now we can get on to the fun part of the flowers and just, there's, there's a few viney bits in here which you probably can't see so there's a bit here there's some here and it's just where she's joined the kind of flowers together there's a few over here Just, and again, it's just a question of picking them out and working out. Yeah, some more down here. There's quite a lot down here, actually. So I think that's it. So now I'm just picking out the colours for the flowers. So I definitely think we're going to have some red. This one I want. Deep scarlet red. Perfect. And I think what I'm going to do with the deep scarlet reds are the little flowers that you can see. Um, so, these little ones here. So, what I'm just going to do the middles of the flowers darker and then leave a little bit of the white on the outside of the petal. So it's a question of finding flowers that are similar to the nap now and just doing the same thing really. So for me it's all of these, you know, the petals are a similar shape and they've got similar markings on them. So that's how I kind of go, right, yeah, they're similar. I don't know what flowers they are, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. So this is deep, deep scarlet. And it's gone up, this is going to be like red as well, I think. That's completely different, and that is completely different. These here are the same. That's different, and that's different. So there's one here. Okay. Well, that's that. And on, on this side, yeah, these here. It's going to be red. That feels the same. The markings are slightly different, but the shape of the flower is very similar. That's different because it's got four. So yeah, you're seeing how I approach now putting in these things. They've all got four petals, so there's another funny little ball. There's a couple more up here. And again, I'm likely not to activate these because the colour's already quite intense and they're really, really tiny areas to get into. You could, if you dot 
see in comic with pencils you could go in with fine liners with this definitely okay so I think that is all of the red that I want to do then I think I'm going to go in with this beautiful purple colour which is violet and I want to do some of these little ones on here, this side which I think is all of these four petal flowers there's lots of like kind of circular shapes here as well which I don't don't quite know what I'm going to do yet probably do them with a gel pen to be honest but I might do them like a darker blue I haven't decided that it's different flower altogether hmm. I don't know if there's any of these four shaped ones over here I don't think there is so I think for now we're going to stop there um, and we'll continue again next time. So thanks for watching. I hope it's all going well. Bye.